This is Dan Bongino, if you're unfamiliar. I believe he's a Fox News host. He's part of the, or he runs the Dan Bongino show. He's a right-wing nutcase to the core. Oh my God, the things that he says are crazy. So I'll listen to what he has to say. It's bound to be wild. And while we listen, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Should just be in the background. Won't bother you too much. You never played before. Next, with your host, Dan Bongino. All right, I, I got a plan. I have a plan, and I need you to hear me out on this because your first instinct, many of you, not all of you, I promise is going to be, what are you, crazy? All right, lay it down for me, uh, Dan. I, I just need you to hear me out. Today's show is sponsored in part by Blackout Coffee. Stop. Oh, my God, dude. Giving you money to these garbage coffee companies don't care. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Why is coffee such a popular, oh, an ExpressVPN, too. They're so popular among right-wingers because they shout them out constantly. All right, start roughly here, I think. Here's the problem with the current news cycle right now. It is so devastating for you. You are the problem. For Biden, and I've got all the receipts coming up. You got George Clooney writing op-eds. You got Obama Rod, also known as David Axelrod. He spoke again yesterday. I told you. Obama Rod. Uh, okay. Well, isn't I forget wasn't David Axelrod like didn't he kind of turn right wing or something I don't remember what he did that was like questionable but he did something that was like really bad did you to listen to him why I mean really bad for society is what I mean Hi, folks in the chat yes you're correct because he speaks for Obama you got Johnny Fav speaking out he was a speechwriter in the Obama White House hosts one of, uh, one of the most popular liberal podcasts in the world it, the news cycle for Biden is catastrophic. So if I'm you in the chat right now, let's reverse roles. So Anita, you take my seat, the McGroins, and I'll take yours. You're probably like, what the hell are you griping about, dude? Th this is great. We're just sitting back and watching all this. We're watching the Democrats, your cannibalism theory come true. You called it, Dan. You said the Democrats would eventually eat each other alive. Just sit back and watch. I did, and I'm correct. Oh, correct prophecy, right? Totally. Here's the problem. Switching roles back. I don't want Biden out of the race. I, I don't know how many, I, I don't know how strongly the, the, the words, adjectives, modifiers, adverbs I got to use to tell you. I don't want Biden out of the race. Evita's uh, going to draw up a little campaign sign. She's quite the artist. But Bongino for Biden. I don't want this guy out of the race. Then he's an idiot. It's beneficial to Republicans to get Biden out. Folks in the chat, serious poll, Bongino, get on the case. Who wants Biden out of the race? Yes, why I want him out of the race. No, I don't. Yes, I want him out. No, I don't. I don't want him out because I want to win. And I am not suggesting to you, to be clear at all, that Trump cannot beat Kamala Harris, Pritzker, Shapiro, Warnock, Newsom. I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you a very simple fact. And you talk to anyone on the Trump campaign, they will tell you what I'm telling you. Go out and have a beer with them. Get them to open up with you. They will tell you exactly what I'm telling you. Yeah, because you can just like go out. Anybody go out, get people to have a beer with you at the in the Trump campaign or whatever. Totally. The entire Trump money machine. That, oh, no, F no, 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 no. This I don't think there's a single yes in this whole thing. The entire Trump campaign right now, messaging, memes has been engineered to take down Biden. Why would we want this guy out of the race? He's correct in this, actually. But it would also be, I mean, there's a lot of, like, support built up for Biden, too. So it would be bad for Biden to leave. But look, they spent, like, a, an inordinate amount of time working on destroying Biden's reputation. They would have to start from zero with somebody else. They haven't built up a propaganda machine against Gavin Newsom yet. They haven't brought out all of his exes and, you know, had them testify to his evil nature and all that other shit yet. They did all kinds of shit with Biden. Quick interjection, this won't take long, I promise. I just want to say I'd appreciate it if you check my Patreon. owenmorgan.com slash Patreon to find it. YouTube's algorithm goes up and down, so I can never predict where it's going to be. Having patrons gives me some level of stability. Okay, back to the video. I don't want him out of the race. We So what I'm getting at here... To kind of land land this plane, we've got to stop the hemorrhaging for Biden. Now, this is where it's going to sound crazy. Don't hate me. Don't hate. Don't hate. 
replicate. Don't hate. I'm telling you what I'm saying is true. We have to halt this news cycle and save Joe Biden. I know it is incoming everywhere. The arrows are coming. Oh, I got to do karate. I get it. I'm like kicking arrows away. The sword's coming at me. Machine guns, nuclear bombs. We have to. We don't have a choice. I, we can beat anyone else. The, who are the 2% who said, thank you, Bocci? You know, who the hell are the 2%? They must have screwed. That's a lot of votes, by the way. Man, 960 votes in, what was that? A minute and 30 seconds or something? Did we tear this thing up, man? <laughs> Folks, this is insane, but we really have to save Joe Biden right now from himself. The best way to do it, wheels are touching the ground now, is for Trump to announce the VP today. It's Thursday. Don't wait anymore. Listen, you run your own campaign. Donald Trump knows what he's doing. He doesn't need advice from me. I have not spoken, nor have they sought my advice on this. I just want to be clear. There's no inside baseball here. They don't need me. Trump does his own thing, and he does it well. If they did and asked, I would say announce it tonight. You got to do it before the RNC. You said it'd be out before Monday. Slow this down, because Biden is giving a press conference tonight at 6.30. They moved it back an hour. Anybody know why they moved it back an hour? Anyone know? What goes on at 6 or 6.30? Um, what? What goes on at 6 or 6.30? Yeah, the nightly news program. So if this thing's a total debacle, they skip the nightly news cycle. And what happens? It flips into Friday during the summer where no one's paying attention. They're afraid it's going to be another debacle. I would announce this thing at 5 o'clock. I okay, I think that's a little bit conspiratorial, but all right. Would. Folks in the chat, because uh, I love and respect you guys. Do you think I'm crazy? We got to save this guy. The, he's not going to survive another few weeks like this. He can't. Obama's turned on him. Hollywood's turned on him. The money's drying up. I'll back well, here's the thing. This is something that a lot of people may not even realize about politics if you haven't been involved long. But after a certain amount of time, propaganda machines wind down and die. So... It just outrage generally dies now. Look at the shit that Donald Trump has done. He inspired a coup on January 6th and pushed it forward. And with time, eventually, he managed to twist it around to make it out like January 6th people were the victims. You just got to sit and wait and be quiet for a little while and everything will kind of flip to your favor eventually with Biden and Israel, that's kind of wound down largely. People aren't really thinking about Israel and Palestine as much as they were previously. It's not affecting him to the degree that it was. That's how this works. The whole Israel thing, that happened long before it should have, if it were going to affect Biden negatively in the election. Ukraine wound down. People slowly but surely ate away at support for Ukraine. You remember when that shit happened originally? Support was through the roof. It was crazy. Literally everybody supported Ukraine. And now you've got certain people like eating away at the support. Right now, at this moment in history, people are critical of Biden. That is accurate. But I don't believe that this is going to maintain through the election. I think with time, it's going to cool down and disappear. Act this all up with receipts. And the entire Trump campaign has been engineered to take out Biden. I'm not telling you they can't lift and shift and start turning the meme team and all these people on Harris or who are Hillary Clinton. Oh, God, meme team. They beat Hillary Clinton before they can do it again. I'm just saying, why? We've got the weakest candidate who's only going to get worse, who has no political skills, who the media is turned on, who will not leave, and who's only, nothing is going to get better. The, the news cycle's not going to stop unless we, we just need to slow it down. It's like a, it's like a train, you, you know, you know is heading off this cliff, but the cliff is 10 miles away. You want to slow the thing down enough so that the crash comes on election day and not with time to fix this thing. Wouldn't it be great if Biden bails out even say three weeks before the election. And th this would be fantastic. It would be a total train wreck. They'd have no time to rehabilitate the new candidate's image. I a new candidate's image. Interesting. I mean, what I would really be thinking about if Biden like left, which isn't happening, I, I will 
I would put money on the fact that it's not going to happen. I mean, you never know what's going to happen in politics, but I would I'm very confident that this shit's not going to happen. And, you know, Biden is not leaving. Anyway, if Biden left three weeks before the election took place, the new candidate wouldn't have to face the same kind of scrutiny and hate that Biden has faced. And it would be it, it might be beneficial to the new person. That being said, Biden has an incumbent advantage that outweighs pretty much any, you know, little advantage that a new candidate might get. So he should absolutely be running and he should, he should stay in the race, no doubt. As I know it sounds nuts, folks, but we, we got to save this guy from himself. You agree. Thank you, Chatsters. Dan is who said Dan is right. I de- Chatsters, Chatsters. OK, D monster. I love you. Is that LD monster? My eye by my eyes are terrible. Um, yeah, I, I, I Vita said it right. Me and Vita are both volunteering our services for Team Biden. You too, Vita. Randy Clue says I'm not nuts. I know I'm not nuts. Someone says, let's go, Brandon, this time for real, Jen Love. Yes, let's go, Brandon. Let's go. Let's it's not FJB, it's let's go, Brandon. Folks, on, on a very serious note, the campaign has been entirely engineered messaging-wise and and swing state-wise to fight on specific focus group tested things that they think works against Biden in very specific states. Those same messages may not work against. He's correct here. But again, the incumbent advantage cannot be uh, overestimated. Other candidates here. Let's back all this up with receipts because I don't want you to think I'm crazy. What did I tell you? What have I told you over the past few weeks? The only thing that is going to force neurosurgeon Dr. Jill out because she's running the whole thing. Forget about Joe Biden. Oh, give me a break, dude. You know who's who's running this whole thing? Who's running the, uh, you know, the, the country or whatever? Individuals who work in the White House. And, and that's true under Trump, too. Not just true under Biden. The president is only there to make decisions. That's it. Er, like throughout the entirety of every presidency, the president has never been the one to like push anything forward. They just make choices that others execute. Joe Biden's a rotting bag of brain mush. She doesn't even know his name half the time. Doc That's complete bullshit. That's not true. Dr. Jill is all that matters. Prominent neurosurgeon, Dr. Jill. What did I tell you? It's the donors. Neurosurgeon? Are we talking about the same Dr. Jill? She's not a neurosurgeon, is she? I thought she was a, what is she a doctor in? I forget. Ed- education or something? Nothing else matters. Biden is a lunatic. His wife is a tyrant. They will not be pushed out of the race until there's no money. And when there's no money, there is no race. Don't ever forget this analogy. I ran for office and I, not a lot of hosts have. I think uh, Hegseth ran and others, but very few people have actually run for office. When you run, you see it yourself. You've got skin in the game. I can talk all the shit I want about, hey, I'd like to visit Europe. I want to go to Paris. Well, if if every airline says, I'm not putting you on our plane, we don't like you, you can talk about it all you want. What are you going to do, boat there, swim there? It's not possible. I mean, yeah, you can take a boat there. <laughs> possible. When there's no money, there is no campaign. True. This is why we're in trouble. NBC News, quote, it's already disastrous. Biden campaign fundraising takes a major hit. Look at the date of this. It's the house. Wait, is that even true? Hang on. Yeah, fundraising is a good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A good kind of indicator of how a campaign's doing. Donald Trump claims to have raised like $400 million in a weekend or something. That's just not true. You got to look at the FEC, I think is what it is, filings that tell how much they've raised. I see Politico 16 hours ago say Dems fear that Biden's fundraising is cratering. Biden's fundraising slowed in April, but his stockpile of available cash is much larger than Trump's, according to filings. This is the FEC filing that shows how much each candidate made in April. This is like reported by the campaign. This isn't speculation. Joe Biden in April, $24.2 million raised. Donald Trump, $9.4 million raised. Cash on hand, 84.5 million for Biden and 49.1 million for Trump. Biden has almost double what Trump has. Pretty close. He over doubled what Trump brought in in April. 
In March, Biden's campaign held 40 million more than Trump's. Last month, that gap narrowed to about 35 million. Biden still has a ton of money on hand. They're still bringing, they're still bringing in a ton of money here. We have nothing to worry about, really, in my opinion. Also, it's still early. They're playing their hand too early. I'll see you. In my opinion. Like, um, I was watching a thing earlier. Floyd Brown, he said they're peaking too early. It's absolutely accurate. The guy knows politics and recognizes that this is actually a bad thing for Trump. Fundraising has gone down and Biden released a statement saying we'll get it done without them. You, I disagree with Owen a lot. Why? So Dr. Jill is not a neurosurgeon. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> what is she? She Jill Tracy Biden. Interesting name. An American educator who's been the first lady since 2021, blah, blah, blah. University of Delaware. Interesting. Okay. Well, lay it down, um, Jen has cookies. Why do you disagree? Days, Justin. I want to know. I want to address these disagreements. Uh, we just had different opinions on things. It seems like it's not personal. Oh, I get it. I get it. 100%. Yeah, I get that. I just want to know because it, if if you're right, I want to be right too. Seriously. I want to analyze my position and see if maybe it's the wrong position. Typing it out this whole time. Can't back into it. I'm sorry, can't get back into it in one post, but donors, major Dems, personal friends of Biden and news media have noticed serious cognitive decline and want him out. Nancy Pelosi supporting getting Biden out. That surprised me the most. Incumbent advantage worked so well for Trump. It usually does. It's such an incredible shakeup that that Trump didn't win. That has only ever happened like once in history or twice or something. I think Jimmy Carter ran with an incumbent advantage and lost. George H.W. Bush ran with an incumbent advantage and lost. And maybe Teddy Roosevelt? I don't remember. It's super uncommon. The incumbent advantage is like everything. Because people want the, the person that, the evil they know, quote unquote, rather than the evil that they don't know. Of course, I guess it's a little bit different here with Donald Trump being like, you know, previously in office. That's unusual, but Fundraising's gone down and Biden released a statement saying we'll get there without him. I don't remember that statement, but that's possible, I suppose. It's not impossible. Well, no, but it's so extremely uncommon. The incumbent advantage accounts for like lots of points, lots of influence or whatever. And for that reason, I don't think Biden should leave. Like strategically, I don't think he should leave, you know, for better or worse. Like if there, there are better candidates than Biden, of course. But strategy wise, I don't think it would be good personally, but I'm, wi I'm willing to have my mind changed. NBC News, quote, it's already disastrous. Yeah. And, and here's another thing about it. You, you need to look no further than like right wing media. Do they want Biden to run or do they want him out? Look at what the opponents are saying about it. And you should get an idea of probably what's best. They have the market research and the, the money to determine what's most helpful or most damaging to Democrats. Biden campaign fundraising takes a major hit. Look at the date of this. It's the halcyon days, Justin, of like yesterday. Folks, you're always three weeks ahead of the news cycle here. I'm never going to bullshit you. Did I not tell you this? This is why now the Biden team, Chuck Schumer's turning now, Chuck Todd's turning, Chuck I haven't heard that stuff. Uh, maybe, I suppose. Johnny Favs, David Obama Rod. This is why they're all turning. It's not that all of a sudden they know Joe Biden has a cognitive disorder. They've known the whole time. It's that the donors are calling these people up going, not only are we going to do this to Joe Biden, we're going to F you too. And we're not going to give to your race. You better get this guy out of here. Yeah, I just disagree. Here. Folks, he's in a world of trouble. I don't know what to tell you. And I want this guy in the race. I don't want him to leave. Someone said, well, Dan, stop talking about that. Stop talking about what? You think it's going to make this thing go away? It's our job now to stop this news cycle for Biden by incentivizing Trump or someone else to come out with a bigger story and at least slow the thing down. But we got to cover this. Who's throwing him a lifeline now? Oh, you got to read this piece. Why the left is throwing Biden a lifeline. Another thing we've addressed ad nauseum on this show. It is the left, the progressive Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, AOC left that has always saved Biden. Why? You P1s know. Because Biden is a moron. No. Uh, I completely disagree that Biden's a moron. He's not. He's extremely intelligent. By moron, do you mean that he's like kind of 
cognitively out of it. I disagree with that too, honestly. Oh, I'm serious, folks. I want you to remember this axiomatic truth about Joe Biden and don't ever forget it. And again, if you think I'm crazy, you're wrong. Not me. Joe Biden is the president Barack Obama always wanted to be, but was too politically savvy to become. The reason Biden is at 37 percent approval and Obama is now at, you know, gosh, 60, 70 percent approval with Democrats. I know why that is. That's because the country has become so polarized in such a short period of time. That doesn't really have much to do with how good or bad they were as presidents. But OK, it's probably 90 is because Obama didn't do as much crazy stuff as Biden. His stuff was crazy. Are, are you kidding me? Biden has run the government nearly like Biden has changed almost nothing about the government, seems to me. Very little. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I just, that's the way it seems to me. You think I'm defending Obama? You're out of your mind. I left my job to run against him. I'm simply saying... Oh, but he ran for president? Oh, okay. Obama had to stop short of absolute crazy because he understood there were political limitations. Clinton did the same thing. Biden's too dumb. It is the left that's saving Biden right now. Okay, so he's saying that Biden is actually an idiot. Like, he's just unintelligent. Not that he's having some cognitive issue. That he's just really stupid. That's just not true. Now, here's what they want. Here's the plan. And this is savvy on the left's part. Evil, but savvy. They want to get him through the election, the AOC crowd, over the hump. Because they know he's an empty vessel. He will do whatever they tell him. They Biden, Jill Biden, neurosurgeon, because she'll be the president, not Joe. She's not a neurosurgeon. No. They'll then owe AOC in the left. You'll get... Medicare for all, Medicaid for all, government health care. You'll get uh, forgiveness of, of health care bills, which means you'll pay. Dude, that sounds incredible. Really? Pay for all this crap instead. Folks, this is what's going to happen. And He's saying this like it's a bad thing. Okay, I'm down. And then what happens? A year in, Biden will step aside and progressive Kamala Harris, and they think they'll get the white. Look. The right um, right wing commentators like this guy right here said the same thing in 2020. If Biden gets in, then he's going to. Blah, 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 blah. You know, another reason why I think this whole Biden is out of it thing is nonsense. Let me tell you why. Let me show you. Here you go. September 12th, 2016. Hillary Clinton's health scare. Nine unanswered questions. Clinton's campaign was tight lipped about her Sunday health scare. Here are nine big questions we still have. As Hillary Clinton's health moves from the fringes to the center of the 2016 po uh, po presidential campaign, there's a lot we still don't know about her scare this weekend. Here's what we do know. Clinton was diagnosed with pneumonia on Friday. During a September 11th memorial event on Sunday at Ground Zero, she was unsteady and clearly needed help getting into a van after becoming overheated and dehydrated. And Clinton canceled a planned trip to California for Monday while she rests at home. They're following her around like a hawk, looking for any opportunity to say she's not healthy enough to run. This is standard propaganda that's used every single election against the candidate. And you know what? I'll give you this. I'll take it a step further. I don't believe that Donald Trump is cognitively uh, like suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's. The reason I say that is because, A, he's always been a f idiot. And B, Alzheimer's and dementia come in three stages. Alzheimer's specifically. We'll talk about that. Alzheimer's comes in three stages. Stage one, two, and three. And they each take about two years to get through. Stage one is you walk into a room and you forget what you're there for. You forget your keys all the time. You're just like out of it. Stage two is you don't remember people. You have no idea who your son is when he walks in to visit you. Stage three, you are catatonic and incapable of like using the bathroom by yourself. That's years four to six when that happens. Biden does not have Alzheimer's disease or whatever, and neither does Donald Trump. They've been talking about this, the news has, since 2016, obviously, talking about health scares and stuff. And since 2020, the 2020 election, it was like nonstop about Biden. This is no different than Hillary Clinton's, quote unquote, health scares. It's all nonsensical trash, all of it, all the way down. I don't think he has dementia because my mom has dementia. 
and that's not what it looks like. He just co has cognitive decline. I don't, yeah, I mean, he has cognitive decline similar to the, the decline of anybody that's 80 years old or even less decline than other 80 year olds. But I don't think he's like out of it at all. I mean, the debate proved he's not out. He's done public appearances since then, and Biden's perfectly fine. I have lupus that has entered my brain and has created lesions on it. As a result, my memory, et cetera, will go downhill. I grew up a gifted kid with eidetic memory, so I do know what the mental decline looks like as I am dealing with it some now. I forget stuff all the time. Stage one still. I have seizures, though, so wow, that's... A rough situation. I'm sorry to hear that you're going through it. The point is that I don't believe that Biden is suffering from cognitive decline to a degree that it affects his ability to do anything. And it's very clearly, in my opinion, clearly being played up by right wing media, just like this Hillary Clinton health scare, quote unquote, was played up by right wing media. It was nonsense in 2016 against Hillary. It's nonsense now. All right, let's continue with Dan here. White House for another eight years, okay? This is what's going on right now. They're in real, genuine trouble. Here's Biden. They're terrified about the George Clooney thing. Why? Because he's an actor, Andy Carney. Biden's fighting back on Clooney from a source. The president stayed for three hours. Clooney took a photo quickly and left. No, they're not fighting back against Clooney because he's a Hollywood guy. They're fighting back against Clooney because he controls a lot of the Hollywood donors, man. Uh, what? I mean, Clooney is very influential, sure, but they're not fighting against him because he's a Hollywood person? I don't understand. They're running out of money. They're running- they're, But they're not. They're not running out of money. Again, Biden is raising twice as much as Donald Trump. He has more in the bank than Trump by like a mile and a half. They're not running out of money. Running out of money. Now, I'm gonna make another prediction. Predictions are like holes. Everybody's got one, but my record's pretty damn good, especially. No, it's it's dog shit. But okay. See over the last few weeks, so I'm going to make another one. This necessarily not is not necessarily a prediction. It's all over the news. But the NATO conference is going on right now. Biden's got this press conference tonight. Move back so they can skip uh, the Thursday news cycle because they think it's going to be a disaster. The Democrats are getting ready to in mass get rid of this guy. They are. They're going to tell the donors and everyone else. I'm I ninety. I think that's ridiculous. Percent chance Biden is not the nominee at this point. That that's absurd, in my opinion. I would say five percent chance Biden's not the nominee. Ninety percent. Is he going to survive the week? I said sixty forty. Yes, he's probably going to survive this week. Now it's up to say ninety five. He survives the week. Okay, ninety five percent. The Democrats are waiting for the NATO conference to be over. They don't want to embarrass Biden. That's in the news. That's not kind of breaking news. My prediction is next week you are going to see. First, the swing state guys all get together on the Democrat side. Then you're going to see the marginal swing state guys. And then you're going to see everyone except the radical far left in the squad come out and get ready to dump this guy. How long he survives after that, I don't know. But I don't think it's very long. Folks, the panic is getting worse. It's near palpable. You can feel it. You can touch it. It's almost material at this point. There is panic. Yeah, that's true. But there shouldn't be panic to this degree, honestly. I mean, people shouldn't be freaking out like this. Point. They now understand that if they are stuck with neurosurgeon Dr. Jill and the oatmeal god, if they're stuck, that the only po the oatmeal god. possible way they can pull this out, said this over and over, is two things, censorship and cheating. Those are going to be the hallmarks. Their campaign is going to have nothing to do with messaging, tactics, any of that stuff. It's going to be cheating and censorship. One of the options to shut them down is this SAVE Act. This SAVE Act is really important. Save like. Yeah, so if you if you don't know what's happening with that, the SAVE Act was a bill that was passed through the House, but not actually made law yet. It has to go through the Senate and everything that makes it illegal to vote as an undocumented immigrant. It's already illegal to do that. It's just an uh, like it was just set up as a uh, an optical lose for Democrats and it's successful. Like Republicans do this stuff all the time, create conditions for an optical lose. Uh, Democrats do it too. Not not in the same way that Republicans do, but you know, it's not uncommon. Like, you know, Major League Baseball saving a game, you know, saving a life, whatever that is, SAVE Act, okay? The SAVE Act is very simple. It would stop illegals from voting. 
The Democrats want illegals to vote, so they're all against it. It passed the House yesterday. Look, it's already illegal for them to vote. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous nonsense. Got a small chance in the Senate, not a great one. And Biden's definitely not going to sign it, okay? Because they want illegals to vote. The Democrats, I'm going to prove to you again, are in a full-blown panic. They now know they have to cheat using illegals if Biden doesn't get out. Which Oh, give me a break. There's still a 10% chance he doesn't leave no matter what until the donors totally dry up. Here's Representative Jennifer McClellan, obviously a moron. I mean, this is a really dumb person. She's a Democrat. Here she is on the House floor. Of course, these Democrats want illegals to vote. I want you to see again, everything with them, they go back to the race card every single time. Apparently, if you stop illegals from voting, that's somehow Jim Crow or something like that. Don't try to make sense out of it. They're freaking liberal assholes. What is he talking about here? And morons, stop trying to be stupid like them. It's not going to happen. You're smart, okay? However, uh, okay. However, they think I, I don't know what he's talking about. Jim Crow or whatever. They've got to gin up what they think is racial hatred. So, like, oh, this is Jim Crow. Listen to this. This bill is essentially a poll tax because I am not aware of a. No, that's correct. Yes, absolutely. That's a that is 100 percent true. It's illegal to create a poll tax. According to the Constitution, you can't have a poll tax, to my knowledge. Or maybe it's just like a bill. I'm not sure. You can't charge people to vote. But you have to have an ID to vote in their bills, like in their mind. If that's the case, if, they, if you want to have both of those things, then you should create an opportunity to uh, have an ID for free. You shouldn't charge for state IDs or whatever. Shouldn't charge for the documents necessary to get the ID. That's an argument that was presented in the Supreme Court. Single proof of citizenship document that does not cost an individual money to get it, unless we are requiring every state to provide one for free, and then it's an unfunded mandate. This is the 2024 version of the Jim Crow poll tax, and we should vote against it. Okay, so there was a Jim Crow poll tax. She's not saying that this is a racist poll tax or whatever i guess she's saying that this is the same as the jim crow poll tax designed to prevent people from voting all right i i can agree with that i think uh, it, it, it just you know the, the only the the only thing that softens the blow from all this nonsense bullshit democrats are feeding you all the time the only thing that softens the blow is the fact that nobody listens to these people anymore Listen, I've been in this business a long time, and I'm telling you, 10 years ago, charges you were a racist, you'd have to defend them no matter how crazy they were. No one even listened. They just assumed the Democrats are lying. No one listens anymore. Yeah, unfortunately, Donald Trump, one of the worst outcomes of Trump being president or winning the election or whatever is that scumbags came out of the woodwork and are emboldened to do whatever they want, and there are no repercussions for it. They can be the biggest pieces of trash on planet Earth, and nobody cares. That's really sad. They just assume stopping illegals from voting is the most non-racist thing you could do because illegals voting in minority districts does what? Dilutes the votes of actual minority voters who are citizens. Don't tell that to your dumb liberal friends. That's not what's happening, though. Because they're too freaking stupid to figure it out. Here's another dipshit, Summer Lee, just stupid, stupid people. It is a xenophobic attack to stop foreign influence in the elections. Now, I want you to think about something before I play this one from this freaking moron. The same Democrats telling you now for what, the 10th time, guys? The Russians are coming again in the election as if anyone's going to believe the intelligence community. Wow. The, the intelligence community is saying this. And he says, don't believe them. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, Russia is not influencing the election totally. You know, it's not even like the United States that Russia is attempting to influence, not solely. Russia influenced the Brexit vote, and they've influenced um, French elections and all kinds of other things. Russia historically is an adversary of the West and democracy, and have attempted at every turn to destroy democracy at any cost in favor of authoritarianism because it dis it destabilizes governments and makes them more powerful in relation 
So it, it would be a surprise to me if Russia was not messing with democracies all around the world. Of course they are. That's a laughable freaking joke and a stain on this country, you slobs at the top doing this, who nobody can stand, nobody trusts, and all of you are going to be fired if Donald Trump gets elected because you're traitors to the company, uh, country at the top doing this. Absolute traitors. This traitors to the company at the top. A little Freudian slip there. It's Russia bullshit again. The same people claiming this foreign influence want foreigners with no allegiance to the United States who are not citizens to influence our election. And if you that's simply not true, you say anything, according to this dipwad, it's a xenophobic attack. Check this dipwad, dipwad. I love it. Dipwad, D-I-P-W-A-D. That's great. Hypotheticals. It is under attack right now, uh, right here with this very bill. Republicans want to throw up barriers because when people vote, they lose. Let me be clear. They that, that's accurate, actually. Really, that's that is correct. Democracies do best when the maximum number of people are voting and making it more difficult to vote deters people from bothering. But you know who's definitely mo for sure. I'm sorry. But you know who's for sure most definitely going to be there to vote every single time? Extremists. They will crawl over broken glass to vote. If you're not out there voting, too, they're going to destroy democracy. That's how it's worked since the beginning of democracy, basically. They don't want you to vote. They don't want to hear black voices, brown voices, LGBTQIA voices, young voices. Our fundamental access to our democracy is being politicized. And this xenophobic attack that we're debating today will make it harder for Americans to vote. My Republican colleagues will claim that requiring IDs is a small ask, but nearly 30 million people lack a valid driver's license. And about 15 to 18 million adults don't have access to documents proving their birth or citizenship. Americans don't need more obstacles. It's already hard enough. That's why I'm proud. You, you hear the end? Americans don't need more obstacles. This has nothing. OK, hold on. Let me one more time. Listen to what she said here. 30 million people lack a valid driver's license and about 15 to 18 million adults don't have access to documents proving their birth or citizenship. Americans don't need more obstacles. It's already hard. Enough. Yeah, that's true. But once again, if Republicans can make it more difficult to vote in general, then they have a higher chance of winning because the extremists will crawl over broken glass to do it no matter what. This is the nature of democracy. Enough. That's why I'm proud. You, you hear the end? Americans don't need more obstacles. This has nothing to do with Americans. Nothing. The bill is about stopping people who are not Americans from influencing American elections. And Yeah, but the thing is, that's not actually happening. That's not happening. But the, the harder you make it to vote in general the more it affects Americans' ability to vote, the more difficult it is for them to vote. So they're attacking a fictitious problem and making it more difficult for regular people to vote in the process. And you know what happens when people can't or don't vote, right? And diluting the vote of Americans. You notice how quick, this is why I hate these people who are absolute garbage and I will destroy their reputation. Your mom's garbage. Reputations. They have no problem whatsoever calling you a racist, a xenophobe, while they... Well, he calls them like a season. Destroy and dilute the votes of black voters and destroy and dilute the votes of Americans. What? This dude suddenly gives a shit about the votes of black voters? Come on. While claiming you're a traitor and supporting Russia. F these a-holes. I'm sorry, they don't deserve a single freaking shred of your... Uh, of, 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 of human dignity at all. They have none of it. These people are... They don't deserve human dignity. Are you f kidding me? Everybody deserves human dignity. Everybody. We're all human beings. Full of shit. They're going to cheat. The question now isn't are they are they want they're telling you they want to cheat. Th this is nonsense. All of it. And you know what's really, really sad about this whole thing? The fact that people on the twit seem to believe that this is treason against the U.S. government. If you don't support this bill that I want, you are committing treason against the U.S. government. That is all over the place right now on Reddit and the Twit. I should probably back that up with proof, right? All right, look, look at this. 
We all literally just saw Joe Biden and 198 Democrats commit treason. Treason. If you still support Joe Biden and the Democrats, you are a traitor to this country. Only Americans should be allowed to vote in the U.S. election. They're twisting this ridiculous optical attack into you're a traitor. You are you have committed treason and you deserve the death penalty for it. That's what um, the penalty for treason is. It's about as disturbing as it gets to me to see people twist something that's very obviously just an optical attack into you are doing something that's worthy of the death penalty. That is some disturbing shit right there. By the way, I got cookies. Would you trust Biden behind the wheel of the car? To operate a motor vehicle, that's a good question. Um, yes. I think it would be less safe than like a 35-year-old who's been driving for a while. Um, but I, th I would trust him. However, I don't need to trust him to be behind the wheel of a car because he's not operating heavy machinery. He's making decisions that other people carry out on his behalf. He has a whole ring of people to keep him accountable. I'm talking just his administration, um, people in the room who can advise him and tell him what the best choice is. And if he completely like loses his grip on reality, like totally, totally, there are people who can take over. There are things in place for that eventuality, like the 25th Amendment and stuff that can be used. Now, that wasn't used under Donald Trump because... Trump wasn't cognitively impaired, but it has been used under other presidents. I think it wasn't was it used under Reagan when he was shot. Didn't the vice president temporarily take control of the country? Or was that was that what caused the 25th Amendment to be passed? I don't remember. Anyway, there are like things in place for the possibility that Biden may not be completely cognitively there. And if it, if it really was an honest, true problem, I believe that people would use it. And they should have to say, if a man can't operate a car, I don't trust him with the most powerful position in the world. Well, I can't operate a forklift. Would you trust me to make political decisions? Um, I can't. Uh, let me think for a second. Well, I can I can drive most things because I know how to drive a standard. Um, let me just think for a second. I can't run a food stand. I don't know how to open and close a a Dunkin Donuts restaurant. I've never gone through that checklist you're supposed to go through to clean up the back and prep it in the morning and stuff. What qualifies me to make political decisions that others carry out? I get your um, your position on this and your oh, my God, I, I feel like Biden right now. I can't think of the word. Um, I got your hesitance. That's not even the word I was looking for, but it's not uh, it doesn't really represent the way that things work. I don't worry. I don't care if Biden can operate a vehicle. I care if he knows how to make decisions that are politically advantageous and safe for the country. That's what I care about the most. Talking about him, not you. Yeah, I know. But the point is that people can do some things, but not others. His ability to drive a car has nothing to do with his ability to make decisions. My ability to open a Dunkin' Donuts has nothing to do with my ability to drive a car or to play a video game. People are full of shit. They're going to cheat. The question now isn't are they are they, they want they're telling you they want to cheat. They want illegals to vote. The only question is is it Nobody wants that. It's not happening. It's going to be enough to overcome what appears from now an overwhelming number of polls, a severe deficit. Illegals combined with mail-in ballots, ladies and gentlemen, is a recipe for disaster. Oh, give me a break, dude. Come on. This is ridiculous nonsense. I'm going to explain to you what I mean coming up in a minute. Receipts coming. These are going to be tough to take. I think we can win, but it's going to be tough. Oh, he has receipts? Okay. Hey, you having trouble sleeping or staying asleep? I've been there. It's not just about feeling tired. Poor oh, no. He's okay. Sleep takes a real toll on your body, your health, your emotional health, your well- beam you know i like listening to these uh advertisements because it tells me what not to purchase driving a car requires quick decision making i think is the comparison okay i don't i don't think it's the same i think it's very different you have like five minutes to make a decision about certain things as president like and you have advisors to give you all of the options to pick from like uh russia 
invades Ukraine, you have five minutes to sit down and discuss it with people. You know, you have a room you go to where you all discuss the problem and then they give you the options and you pick one. I mean, tell me what you think about this in the comments. This dude is just shameless. Like, oh, being he just lies nonstop. I believe it's lies with this guy. Not everybody, but with Ben Shapiro, for example, with Dan Bongino, I think it's lies. Tell me what you think. 